Welcome back to another beautiful episode of An Adoption Story. From me connecting with my own birth family to creating an incredible community worldwide for adoptees, I'm now helping other adoptees around the world share their journeys. And with this series, adoptees have been connecting with their family links using MyHeritage, an incredible website that helps adoptees build their family trees, learn about their past and connect more with their identity. For all of us, no journey is the same, but we all share that one thing in common, adoption. And for this story, I am here in Chicago, Illinois, where I'm meeting 32-year-old Ivan. Ivan was adopted at the age of 13 months from Moscow, Russia. He was then raised in Santander, Spain. Later on, as Ivan grew older, he then moved to Madrid. From Spain to here in Chicago, Ivan then adapted again to a new way of life, this time with getting married here to his wife Nikki. For Ivan, learning about his family and his roots has always been important to him, and with the support inside the adoption community, he has been able to connect more for his own journey and for others. This is his story. Ivan. Okay, we're a little <laughs> nervous now. Ivan, yeah. so good to see you. Hi Alex, how are you? Great. Welcome to Chicago. It is so nice to be here in Chicago. My first time, and I know that both of us, we have connected for quite a few years now. Yeah, I think I started the project with you in 2017, I think, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. And I wrote you the first email long time ago when I was in Madrid, because I think I read in, in a newspaper, in a digital newspaper, a Kiwi startup trying to connect adoptees with the the, with the families in Russia and I said, wow, this, I want to get involved in this project. In 2017, Ivan first reached out to me about the I'm Adopted community. With him wanting to get involved, Ivan then joined our team as our Spanish writer and translator. And in 2018, we took a bit of the Irish luck with eventually meeting for a meetup for adoptees and adoptive parents in Galway, Ireland. An event that both Ivan and I organized for I'm Adopted. This moment, in Ivan's timeline, however, was still early on on what he was sharing with his journey. I never remember that day very special because it was a heat wave in Madrid. It was a horrible summer, summer and I said, OK, I'm going to enjoy some fresh days in, in Ireland. And also it was a very, very special moment for me because it was the first time in my life that I explained my adoption history to, to, to I, people. Before this, you didn't, never really talked about it. No, no. I keep it like as a secret. Of course, some, of course, my, my family knew about my story of and course. some very close friends, yeah. but no, I didn't. It wasn't a big discussion you no, talked about. No, 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 no. Ivan's story began in Moscow, Russia in 1991. He was adopted at the age of 13 months old from an orphanage by his Spanish parents. Before this though, the build-up and process of adopting Ivan has its own story in itself. So my family is original from the north of the country, from the north of Spain, and the city, uh, the name is Santander, it's a beautiful place. And my parents, they got married when they were 24, 25, I think, and they wanted to adopt a baby in Spain, but uh, the list was so, so wide. The waiting time for to get a baby in Spain in that time was like 10 years. So they decided to try in other countries. Yes. They tried to do it in some countries in, in America and in, in Spanish-speaking countries. Also in, in Asia, but it was so difficult in that time. And one of my mother's sisters, she worked as a, she worked as a journalist in Moscow in the Soviet Union, and she dealt with all of these problems in, in Moscow because it was the first time that Spanish parents adopted a baby in Russia. So basically, I was the first Russian or the first Soviet baby adopted by Spanish parents in 1991. So yeah, because I was born in 1990, in July, and I went to Spain in August 1991, and the Soviet Union collapsed or disappeared at the end of that year. So basically, yeah, I was in the age of this era and the age right. of the USSR. Yeah. Right when things changed. Mm -hmm. At the end of 1991, the Soviet Union had just collapsed, and Ivan's parents had just adopted Ivan a few months prior in August of that year. A moment in history that Ivan can connect his early life to. With him being adopted at such a young age, memories for Ivan 
didn't begin until we got to Spain. Our parents, they always told us about our backgrounds, uh, about my history in, in Russia and how they traveled to the country, how they built all of the international relations between the two countries, the lawyers, the, 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 the flights, the translators, the papers. Yeah, they always told us the story and we knew that we were adopted since the beginning. So you've always had that knowledge? Mm -hmm. So I had all of this information because also my parents collect all of the documents in a, in a, in a big folder with documents from, from Spain, from the Soviet Union, from Moscow, the, the, the Soviet passport, the adoption certificate, yes. and also many uh, news in the newspaper in that time because it was, it was a new, you know, in, in my city, which is very small, but also in, in some Russian medias because it was something important to have a baby. I didn't have any bad experience being adopted in Spain because I'm look alike the rest of the people yeah. in, in, in my school, in my city, in my town, in the, in, the, in the village. So no one could tell that I came from Russia, yeah. you know? So this look alike helped me to not have, who say, like no, not to suffer any kind of racism or um, who say distance or, yeah. or difference with the rest of the, of the kids. Do you feel like that played a huge part of your own identity growing up? Of course, I was exploring my multiple identities uh, through all of these years. I'm 32, so I had a lot of three decades now to, to, to search and to dig in my, in my identities. Of course, I don't have any memories from Russia. And I think knowing that it was adopted from that place so far from, from me, I grew up reading, I grew up watching movies about Eastern Europe or the Soviet Union and I fall in love with Russian culture and literature for example. So and I was trying to integrate of the little yeah. Russian or um, culture in, in my life. Yeah. That helped you build your identity. Yeah. yeah. Up to the point where mm -hmm. later on during your childhood, because when you get into your teenage years, mm -hmm. you must have had more questions about your birth family. Of course, I had a lot of a lot of questions, and I asked to my parents, and they gave me all of the answers as they could in that time. But for sure, they didn't have information about about my birth family. But the only information that I have that I had for my birth family was my biological mother name and the orphanage where I lived for um, for a year. Yeah. But nothing more information. No more information. Ivan has always known that he was adopted. His parents always clarified exactly what information they had, understanding for Ivan that one day he might want to pursue a search. Though with an upbringing that he cherished, he always felt a slight disconnection when it came to meeting new people within the family in Spain. And on the back of his mind, he always wondered, who exactly are my blood relatives? I have a huge family where like 15 cousins in one side, my mom's side and eight in my uh, father's side. Yeah. So I have a huge family in Spain. And I remember with kind of sadness when they were all together and uh, we had a new cousin or a new baby in the family. Wow, he's like the grandma. Oh, he's, he has the uh, grandfather's eyes. And I said, okay, I'm not like that. So I remember it with sadness and you, um, it was some moments that I, didn't feel part of the family. You know, it's only like yeah. physical appearance. Yeah. It's a disconnection feeling, and you feel like you you are connected with your family, but the genetical side and the even looking and personality side, not all of that is there. Mm -hmm. And that plays a big part of being an adopted person, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it is a we want to look in the mirror yeah. or to look someone that is um, similar to us, look like us. And because this is a part of the human behavior, to have someone similar to you, close to you. Yeah. And all of these feelings that I had when I was a child and a, or a teenager makes me feel like, or makes me, how do say, like motivated to Fine. initiate the big search that I did. Yeah. Ivan has always held a close relationship with the family that adopted and raised him. But it wasn't until later on, as he grew older, that he decided that he wanted to pursue a search for his birth family. With his worries on what he might find out, he kept the search close to himself until he felt the time was right to explain the situation to his parents. I didn't uh, tell to my family 
my intentions. I didn't tell them the information that I had and my what is it, my aim to um, that, that I really wanted to go to to go or to come back to Russia. So I only told them that I have found my biological mother in Moscow only when I already bought the tickets to go to Moscow. Okay. So at that time it is what it was. I didn't have the who say the strength, the power to communicate with my parents. They were the best parents in the world, of course. But it was me and my personality that I didn't feel very comfortable or very safe to talk about my intention to go to Russia. Yeah, probably I was afraid yeah. to, to disappoint them or to make them feel very sad or like they were losing a child or that I was crazy to do that. And also I remember when I was preparing my journey to go to Moscow, my grandma, uh, father's side, she told me, or she told to my mom, and what happened if Ivan stop, stops uh, loving us? And when I heard this idea from my grandma, I said, wow, it was the first time that I thought, wow, may maybe for them it's a struggle too. It's something, yeah. it's, a, it's a big process, not only for me to, in the search of my birth family, but for them to, to suffer for my safety, for my mental health or from my life in general. Put yourself in their shoes. Yeah. Of your adoptive parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's a big worry for adoptive parents, thinking that they would lose their child. Mm -hmm. And it's a natural worry, it's a concern. And I know that you're probably protecting yourself as well as your adoptive parents, but also there's a certain point where you do, do probably need to say something, but it's what do you say and how do you say it? Yeah. That's the big question. There's no right answer. Mm -hmm. There's no right answer. The search for Ivan on any links to his birth family started with the name of his orphanage in Moscow. These early searches began almost 10 years before he eventually made the decision to go to Russia. This was because he wanted to make sure he was a bit older first, as for any adoptee, a journey like this always takes time to prepare mentally. So I knew the name of the orphanage. It was Domrivienka number 12. It is in the south part of Moscow. It was a beautiful place. And I think because it was in the city of Moscow, they had some money and funds to uh, protect the, the, the babies. Because you know, in the 90s, on the 88, 1991, it was a huge crisis of uh, yeah. abandoned babies in, in Russia. It was the hell for the babies in that time. And I knew the place. So when Google Maps appeared in our lives, I could Google it. I could uh, who's it, locate it in the map. And you know, with the tool in the in Google, there is a timeline, so you can see the little satellite pictures. Yes, that's right. So I was very worried because for many years I saw that all of the buildings around the area they were destroyed and built again, new big uh, buildings. And I was yeah. wondering, when is the turn of my orphanage? So and around 2008, I remember that the Ministry of Health of or something like that in Russia. They created a database of all of the orphanages, and I click on my off on my orphanage website, and I saw a telephone number, an email, and the name of the director, and I said, "Wow, it's it's a it's a miracle." So I remember, like, I sent like ten emails in English, in Spanish, and translated into Russian. I remember that she replied to me like a couple of times, like, "Yeah, we know who you are, we know your history, we have your file, we have your information, but." we can't give you any information because the law doesn't allow us to give personal information of your birth mother. I tried to send more emails along, I've probably for three more years. And in 2012, I sent another email, like very big, long email, giving my explanations. I sent them the copy of my passport, the copy of my adoption certificates. And I say, please help me because I don't have any way to find this woman in Russia. It's the biggest country in the world. And I know if she was alive or not. And two months later, I think in summer, August, July uh, 2012, she replied to me and she wrote me, Ivan, we're going to close the institution in, in soon. So this is the name of your birth mother. This is the or just about the patronymic because she got married again. Yeah. Someone from the orphanage contacted my birth mother before and asked, because otherwise it would be... That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So with this address, I tried to 
called the phone number many times, no one answered the phone and I say, mm, what can I do? So I Google again in the yellow pages, you know, in like a, a phone directory in Moscow, type in the name on the Ochizva and the patronymic and the surname of my birth mother. And I saw like three results with the same name, with, with the same surname, living in the same street in Moscow, and, but in different apartments and different numbers. I say, what can I do? I can contact with all of these three women at the same time. And I was thinking, do it as an older school. So I took uh, three pieces of paper and my pen and I wrote a handwriting letter in Spanish, in English and in Russian. For your birth mother. For your birth mother. Yeah. And I sent the letters to Moscow, to the three different addresses. And two months later, someone replied to be my email. I am the cousin of the husband, blah, 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 of your gift mother. Your birth mother is alive. She lives in Moscow and she really wants to meet you. And it was like, I was terrified because I was uh, enjoying the summer in Amsterdam, you know, partying. And I had that email in, in my phone with my friends and it was completely shocked. And I remember my, I felt my body in one hand very excited and very happy, but the other sad and the other, and the other hand terrified and, and, and blocked. And they told me, what's happened to you? I, I just get this email. Shocked. He was shocked. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what to do. Yeah. And I remember I went directly to the hostel because we were poor. We didn't have any money to, to go to a big hotels. We were sleeping all together in a big room <laughs> hostel. Yeah. And I was sleeping for 20 hours because I was so shocked with this, yeah. uh, with this information. For any adoptee, hearing news about a connection to birth family always takes time to process. It can be overwhelming, exciting, but also nerve-wracking. With sending out three letters to three different addresses, Ivan wasn't sure or what to expect would happen. With only being 22, when he got a response back from a family member of his birth mother, he took time to reflect and wait for when the time was right to then go to Russia. So how long from that first letter that you received back to then going to meet your birth mother? Um, two years. Two years. I got the first email from her in 2012 and I traveled to Russia in 2014, April 2014. And what was that yeah. like? I don't know how to describe the experience right now, but uh, from my perspective today, I could say that it was a traumatic experience mm. from one side because the meeting with my birth mother wasn't mm, very happy at the beginning. I expected more, we say like, not, not feedback back, but um, it was very cold and I can understand and I can judge her right now. It, it, was, it was hard, but in that time I said, okay, this is what it is. I came all the way from Spain to Russia. Uh, I had a translator, a friend who translated to me all the conversation because I couldn't say any word in, in Russian. It was in, in English and bad English to bad Russian to bad Russian to Spanish. It was a mix of languages that it was, but it was hard and it took me all of this time to realize that probably I was like re or, or I felt like re-abandoned again yeah. because I, I took all of this emotional journey and physical journey to reunite with my birth mother and it wasn't so happy at all. And also because she denied the name of my birth father because I asked her, I want to know about my birth father. And she gave me only the name and the son name and his origin, he was Armenian, but no more information. And my father was Armenian is something that I don't, I, that I didn't know what, what was Armenian and what was the culture. It was new to you. It, it was completely new for me, new culture, new language, new religion, new part of the world. And also she gave me pictures of my ancestors, about her family. One side of her family, they were Russians from Moscow, and the mother's side, they were, they were from Odessa, today's Ukraine. It's a beautiful city. They had Jewish, Jewish and Greek origins from Odessa. And after the Soviet revolution, they moved to Moscow and they ended up in Moscow. Did you feel like despite the reunion felt cold, did you feel like you had a lot of questions answered? No, I didn't want to ask many questions. I was, 22, I, I, I didn't go for in therapy for in, in my life. I wasn't ready for that reunion. Yeah. But I was 22 and I was 
super uh, how you say energetic and it was super young and young and I, I, I don't care and I was I traveled alone but the consequences were uh, were uh, not happy the first meetup for Ivan with his birth mother may have been difficult but with learning and understanding more about his birth family from his birth mother he now had the name of his birth father Ivan now focused on a new search and it wasn't long until a sibling in Russia who he hadn't met reached out to Ivan with a photo that changed everything. So I moved to Madrid in 2014 after coming back from Moscow, but I moved to Jerusalem in Israel for six months to study. And during uh, the holidays, my half brother from Moscow, he sent me a WhatsApp. My father passed away two days ago. But I know, I knew that his father wasn't my father. He was a different father. Okay? Different father. Yeah. yeah. But I was like, why are you sending me this information right now? And I, I realized that in the messages, he wasn't very, very sad. And he told me, I have something to tell you. And he sent me a picture with our mother in common. And I could see her. And I thought the guy close to her was my brother's father. And he told me, this is your mother and this is your father together. Yeah. And it was another shock. Because your birth father. And my birth mother together in a, in a party because they, they were in a restaurant with uh, champagne and, yeah. and they, uh, he was wearing a suit and, he was, uh, and she was wearing nice clothing. And I said, why? Why? When I got this photo, it was like a mirror because I had my birth mother and my birth family together and I could see, wow. Ivan started to understand more once he saw that photo of his birth father. He cleared the confusion as well with the brother in Moscow by knowing now that his brother's father was different to his own. He knew that there may now be a chance to find him. And with understanding now that he had links in Armenia, it was still early, but Ivan knows that with having the first name and photo of his birth father, he was willing to do everything he could to find out exactly what happened to him. Many people in the Armenian community in Jerusalem, they give me some information. You know, in that time, in the 90s, probably he immigrated from Armenia to Moscow because it's, it, it was something normal to... Moving around. Moving lot. around. Yeah. Maybe he was, he and your mother, they fell in love, they have you and you are here and you are happy and alive and, and cheers with, with me with us. It took like four years in the search so the search of my birth father began, of course, with this picture and with that name. And I got a scholarship to go to Armenia in 2017. And I spent a month in Armenia, in Yerevan, is the capital. In the morning, I was working in the museum. And in the evenings, I was working, just literally walking the street with the picture, asking to everyone if you have some information about my father. You walked around Armenia and asked people on the street. Yeah, with their more or less. And also I had some friends on the ground yeah. that they helped me with in the media, with the police, in the army. And also uh, my brother from, from Moscow, he told me that probably your father is from this city, but I'm not sure. Yeah. So I went to this city and I had a friend in the city and he told me, Ivan, I researched in all the databases in the country. Either someone is giving you incorrect information or someone is trying to put you outside of the, of the way. So there is no information about your father. But in Yerevan, in the city, in Armenia, I, I, I had a good friend from Moscow. He's Armenian, but he's from Moscow. And when I went back again to Madrid, I, once I was in Madrid, I convinced him, please, could you go to visit my birth mom and try to not convince them, but to create the, the, the comfortable atmosphere, atmosphere where, and if it's possible to ask her information about my father. So I remember that situation. I was in my apartment with the WhatsApp video. The connection was terrible, but it was great to see my brother and my mother for first time together, in, uh, you know, in a, in a video call. On the, on the WhatsApp, yeah. In a WhatsApp, and my friend was there translating everything from Russian to English and, and, to, and to English too. And the connection was perfect. Yeah. So I remember like I sent a WhatsApp in English. Now is the time. Ask about my father. And he told me, okay, let me 
give me one minute. And I remember that the video was off. I said, no, no, not now. I want to listen to the, the answers. And he called me back and he told to me, okay, this is the information I have for you. Your, your biological mother gave me the, the patronymic, the date of birth and the city where he came from. And I, I think I posted everything in, in I Am Adopted and in other web pages. And it was 2000, at the end of 2018. Through our I'm Adopted community, Ivan began reaching out, asking for help with tracking down his birth father. He then reached out through other social media. And by this time, at the end of 2018, Ivan felt like he was close, but was also surprised with the message he received that New Year's. I got a message from a person that previously I contact and she told me, don't write to me more messages. I don't know who is this man, please stop. But all of them, they answer me like, oh, poor guy, I will help you if I could. But that woman that I saw her picture in Facebook and when she answered me, no, I don't have this information, I thought, She's my sister. See, probably she's my sister. And New Year's came, celebrations, champagne, blah, blah, blah. And a week later, she sent me a message at 3 a.m. in the morning. I was in Madrid and I could read like, who you say, like waking up, barely waking <laughs> up. Hi, guy, I'm probably an eighth and I'm sure I am your sister. With Ivan now having a connection to his sister, it wasn't long until his sister then visited him in Spain. He knew now, as he didn't know about his sister earlier, this was a chance for him to now learn more about his birth father. My sister, she's from Moscow, she's Armenian, and she came all the way from Moscow to visit me in Madrid in 2019. And she was crazy, I think we have the same personality. It's crazy. And she's completely crazy and brave. And I asked her, you are not afraid to come to visit me? I said, no, I know you are my brother, so it's not, um, it's not so a problem. So she was more excited about more it. excited. Excited, yeah. And also for her, it was very, very hard because her father abandoned the whole family in the time that I was born, probably. So she and the other siblings, they grew up without a father, only with the, with the mother. So it was kind of traumatic for her to come to Spain to meet me. And once she was in Madrid, for first time, we made a phone call to our father. He was somewhere in Russia. Really? Yeah, and the conversation was very hard because she started to the conversation in Russian and I could understand everything she said. I am here with a man, we are siblings, and do you have something to say? And he, he said very bad words that, I don't know this story, I don't know what you're talking about, please give me alone. We took a pause. We went for a coffee, yeah. we, we came back and we called him again. And I started, I, I spoke in Russian and I say, hey, my name is Ivan, I was born. This is the name of my biological uh, mother. I was born in, in July in Moscow. I would like to, to meet you. And he said, oh my God. And this was the end of the conversation. And again, I had to lie down in the house for some hours because it was a shock for me for my sister and for my father, because the first time she counted his father, yeah. her father for, for after 20 years probably. So for her as well, it was a big shock. It was, it was a big shock. Connecting with any birth family can be overwhelming. Ivan was happy to know that his sister was by his side as he made that call to his birth father. What Ivan understands is that he lives a difficult life inside of Russia. And those connections with an Armenia are from when his birth father went there previously in the 1990s. Shortly after living there in Armenia, his birth father then went back to Russia. And after that phone call, his sister went back to Moscow and Ivan continued to keep in touch. But around 2020, he unfortunately lost contact with his birth father, but managed to learn more about his family links inside of Armenia. And in 2022, Ivan went back, but this time as a husband to Nikki. He gave me the contact of his brother in Armenia and my biological grandma. And yeah. when I realized and when I knew that, wow, I have a grandma, a live grandma in Armenia, and she was like 85 years old or something. 
and I was waiting two years. And finally, I went to Armenia in 2022 and I met my aunts, my cousins, and finally my grandma. You know, it's a treasure. What was it like meeting them? It was, you know, my skin now is completely different because it's, it was amazing because I, I was a different man. It was a different person. Yeah. I grew up, I grew up personally, spiritually, f physically, emotionally, and I traveled with my wife. She yeah. was a, a, a support. She was so happy to, to travel with me and she helped me a lot. It's so important. And the conversation was in Russian, in Armenian, in English, in Spanish, and I was so nervous, of course, but also when I came to Spain, I felt relieved. And I said, you know, Ivan, you did it. I didn't meet my father in person because he's in Russia and I can't go right now because of the situation, but I would like to go in a couple of years to of meet him because I, I know his health is not good. But at least I met his sister, some of my cousins, and my grandma in Armenia. For Ivan, he continues to grow those connections with his birth family in Armenia and Russia. While he continues to support those within the adoption community, he also continues to learn more about his birth family as he grows his family tree. With using my heritage, Ivan had started to track further with his links as he learns more about his family. This has helped him understand more about where his bloodlines come from. Knowing this simply helps us adoptees with our identity as we continue to go on these journeys. And with Ivan now living in Chicago with his wife Nikki, he understands that there are many different backgrounds throughout his entire family. And with anyone going on a search for birth family, Ivan knows just how important it is to have support by your side. It's very important to have someone close to you that support you, to help you in the process. It's very important you or the rest of the adoptees not to find their biological families, maybe it's not the most important, but to understand who you are, yes. who is your origin. But because this is what I've learned, it's just to understand with not judging. judging. It's, it's, it's a hard work, but it's when you can remove all of these layers of uh, traumas or, or um, emotions, you can feel free. But you need someone close to you, your wife, your husband, your friends, to help you. And also a community in Facebook, yeah. in I Adopted, and together we can understand who you are. And this, of is, course. this is very important. I think it's understanding who you are, building some identity for yourself. And if you want to find birth family, as your choice. If you don't mm -hmm. want to, you can at least try and build your culture, your background and your bloodline. I think that's a big part of mm -hmm. the whole community. Yeah. So thank you so much, Ivan, oh, for your time you. here. So nice to be here in Chicago. <laughs> and I know that Sharing these stories, sitting down with other adoptees is so important and this is why we talk with each other because it's mm -hmm. important for the community and I thank you so much for sharing your journey with me. Yeah. It's a pleasure Alex. Nice to be and here. Welcome to Chicago thank and you you're so enjoying much. this very good weather. It's yeah. good. Well, yeah. I have to go home soon, but this is perfect. <laughs> Ivan continues to help more adoptees in the community with his work as our Spanish editor for I'm Adopted. He also knows when the time is right, he will revisit his birth family in Russia and Armenia. Also, with connecting through other extended links inside of Ukraine. Like all of us adoptees, our journeys always continue. And if you want to learn more about Ivan's story and his work with I'm Adopted, please visit the links below.